In this video, we're going to discuss phase transitions in the context of uh, the enthalpy of those phase transitions. All right, in everything that we have done until now with the first law, we've mostly focused on either uh, gas expansions or heating cooling up objects or a combination of those. And, and now it's time to move on to uh, better applications of the first law uh, with regards to, to things that are interesting in the life sciences, such as phase transitions. And uh, in, the f in future videos, we will look at chemical reactions, which is kind of the big deal. But phase transitions are physical changes because the only thing that is taking place really is a physical change of the state of matter of the substance you're, you're interested in. So if this is water, right? a phase transition that we call fusion would be the transformation from solid into liquid. That is that we call that a physical transformation because no chemical bonds are broken. It's some of the interactions between uh, the water molecules that are rearranged as you go from this uh, solid to the liquid to the gas. The life sciences, uh, there are many types of uh, phase transitions in addition to the ones that we have here. Uh, for example, when you have a protein solution, uh, that protein might denature. And that denaturation of proteins is, is a process that can be treated uh, much the same way as a phase transition. So everything that we're going to see here with the more common phase transitions in pure substances would apply as well to denaturation of proteins or the unraveling of DNA and so forth. All right, so if you take a pure substance like water or ammonia or CO2, uh, these are the phase transitions that we're going to be interested in. Okay, so the names are fusion from solid to liquid, freezing from liquid uh, back to solid, uh, fusion is also called melting, and then from the liquid to gas you have vaporization or condensation if it's from the gas to the liquid, and you can also connect the solid to the gas directly through sublimation, and the opposite is called deposition. Now there is a table in the book that actually tell you uh, what the enthalpies of each one of these uh, phase transitions uh, is for uh, given substances, again like water and uh, ammonia and methanol and so forth. And uh, notice that uh, that table contains enthalpies uh, rather than internal energies. And the reason is that these phase transitions are all isothermal and isobaric. Okay, so that is actually kind of important, right? The, the, the idea here is that if you're under standard conditions, that means one bar of pressure on pure substances, right? While water is turning from the solid into the liquid at zero Celsius exactly, the temperature doesn't change. That is an isothermal process. And in addition, uh, the process is isobaric, right? So constant pressure, constant temperature, right? Now, so it makes sense that we actually use enthalpies because enthalpies uh, are the amount of energy transferred as heat at constant pressure, right? So if we're able to measure the amount of energy you need to, to supply to an ice cube to melt it into the liquid at constant pressure, then that will be the enthalpy directly. That's why enthalpy is very useful. Okay, so let's take here some values. Uh, uh, so again, these are going to be standard, which, which means uh, one bar of pressure and pure substances. So for fusion in water, which will be this, fusion. You have uh, uh, two data points in that table. One of them is the freezing point, right, which is the temperature at which the phase transition takes place uh, under stellar conditions, so one bar, and that happens to be zero Celsius. And then uh, the uh, enthalpy of vaporization, or the fusion, which will be denoted as delta fuse, or to F, H, M, standard. Right, so SUVM means that if this is not per mole basis, so the units will be kilojoules per mole, that means standard conditions, and then fusion tells you what is the process taking place. And this number is 6.01, and again, the, the uh, units for this will be kilojoules per mole, okay? Now, there's a, a second uh, block of data which has to do with vaporization. Right, so you all will also have uh, the equilibrium temperature for the liquid to gas uh, point, transition point, which we call the boiling point, right? So uh, there you will have your T sub B, which for water at one bar of pressure would be uh, 100 Celsius. And then uh, you also have the enthalpy of vaporization there, which will be molar and standard, right? So one bar pure substances, 
on upper mall basis, the units will be kilojoules per mall. And then uh, that's a vaporization process, and that uh, number is uh, 40.7. Okay, so these numbers are positive, it means that it takes energy to actually, uh, uh, energy as heat, to be able to turn ice into liquid and then to vaporize the liquid into the gas. Okay, uh, so for all of the phase transitions that you have here in this diagram, moving from left to right will be endothermic, that means positive uh, transition enthalpies. And moving from right to left would be exothermic. That means that you will have negative enthalpies. Right, so if you stop to look at that table, you actually realize that there's no value for condensation or freezing, right? You actually only have the values for fusion and vaporization. But the reason that those numbers are there, are, are not there, is that uh, vapor condensation is exactly the opposite process as vaporization, right? So you would take gas, water gas at 100 Celsius and one bar of pressure and condense it into the liquid at 100 Celsius and one bar of pressure, right? So notice that the only thing that is different between condensation and uh, uh, vaporization is what is the initial and final state, right? In condensation, you will have the gas is the initial state and then the liquid is the final state. Uh, for water, the, the temperature will be 100 Celsius and the pressure of one bar. And then uh, for vaporization, the initial state will be liquid, and then the final state will be the gas. And well, because enthalpy is a state function, right, the only thing that you're actually doing is, is reversing uh, the initial and the final point. So the only thing that is going to happen to the enthalpy, which is a state function, is that the sign will change. Okay, so in the table, in addition to having the vaporization, the fusion enthalpies, you also have the condensation and freezing enthalpies, which will be exactly the same numbers, but with the opposite sign. Okay, that is one of the great uh, uh, advantages of uh, enthalpy being a state function. Okay, all right, great. Uh, uh, what else can we uh, say about this uh, fusion and vaporization? Uh, well, this idea that uh, uh, for a state function, the enthalpy, uh, the initial state and the final state is the only thing that matters to uh, uh, determine the value of the enthalpy is an entirely universal. So we will see that that also applies to chemical reactions in which if we go from reagents to products, we'll have a value for the enthalpy. But if we decided to study products to reagents, so the reverse reaction, then uh, the change in enthalpy in the reaction would be exactly the same, but with opposite sign. Okay, so that's, that's something that is uh, useful here in phase transitions and then uh, it will appear again in chemical reactions. Now, what about sub sublimation and deposition? Well, uh, sublimation and deposition can be studied in principle by combining the fusion and vaporization enthalpy, right? So the idea here is, is as follows, right? So uh, suppose that uh, you now have an energy diagram or an enthalpy diagram that looks like this, and this is your solid, and that is your gas. Right, so we know that uh, sublimation will be endothermic. You would need to supply energy to the solid to turn into the gas, and the amount of enthalpy that you need to supply, or uh, energy as heat, will be the difference between these two. All right, but uh, uh, suppose that you actually have here uh, the liquid phase, and you notice that you actually have this enthalpy uh, that will be fusion, and then you also have this enthalpy which will be vaporization you can clearly see how sublimation, the enthalpy of sublimation, will be the sum of the enthalpy of fusion and vaporization. And that is true. There's a little problem, though, with, uh, uh, with proceeding this way. And that is that uh, uh, the enthalpy of, of fusion and vaporization are generally not provided at the temperature that you're interested in. Okay, so notice that here, uh, uh, you simply cannot add the enthalpy of fusion at 0 Celsius to the enthalpy of vaporization at 100 Celsius to find the enthalpy of sublimation of uh, solid water to gas water because those temperatures are different. But if you want to proceed this way, adding up the fusion and vaporization, then you would need to have these values at exactly the same temperature, and that would be the temperature at which you're calculating the sublimation enthalpy. Right, so, uh, uh, you know, how to uh, calculate, how to see uh, how these values change with temperature. So suppose that you are interested in calculating vaporization at 25 Celsius instead of 100 Celsius. That's something that we will learn how to do in the homework problems. Okay, so 
uh, again, this is uh, kind of the, the gist of this, uh, how we think about uh, phase transition physical changes. And again, the, the main application is that uh, in the life sciences, when you think about maybe biological tissues or biopolymers, uh, generally we talk about uh, denaturation of those uh, biopolymers. But really the science behind it is pretty much what we have here. It's just a phase transition and there will be an enthalpy of denaturation associated with it. Now when you look at the homework problems, uh, the, the idea here is that now you can connect these uh, values of the enthalpies that you have here to other aspects that we have learned earlier uh, in this course. Right, so for example, a problem that you will find in the homework will be, well, suppose that you want to um, calculate what is the enthalpy for this process in which you're going to be turning water that is liquid at 80 Celsius and one bar to maybe uh, water that is gas at 120 Celsius and one bar. Right, so notice that there is uh, decidedly a phase transition. You're turning the uh, liquid to the gas, right? But uh, uh, there's something else, right? If you're working at one bar of pressure, there is that that phase transition takes place at 100 Celsius and not at 80 Celsius or 120 Celsius, right? So the idea is that you have to mix your uh, or combine your uh, uh, vaporization uh, that you have right here. That would be the enthalpy to the enthalpy that it takes for you to first heat this liquid from 80 Celsius to 100 Celsius, okay, uh, then the vaporization, and then you also have to add uh, uh, the enthalpy for heating the resulting gas at 100 Celsius from the phase transition to 120 Celsius, which is kind of the final point of this problem. Right, so again, those problems will, be, will give you an idea for uh, uh, how to combine phase transitions with heating, cooling, perhaps gas expansions, right, the, the rest of uh, problems that we have seen earlier on. Okay, so uh, in the next video, we're going to uh, look at how these values for uh, the enthalpies of phase transitions are actually determined for maybe the denaturation of, uh, of proteins or, or any other biopolymer, okay? That employs something that is called differential scanning calorimetry, and again, that's going to be the body of the next video.